All right, guys, we're walking along here on the northeastern side of the cemetery. And we're going to walk to the grave of an actress who was actually in the, the cast for the play that Lincoln was watching at the Ford's Theater. Sure. And she was there uh, when it happened, right? Mm -hmm. In the green room? Yep. The play was called Our American Cousin. And at that time, it was considered a comedy it was making its rounds. But this actress's name was Catherine Evans. A pretty remarkable story. She was in the green room, like you mentioned, when the assassination actually occurred. And she saw John Wilkes Booth earlier that afternoon. She heard the shot, went out, looked up into the presidential booth, and her word for word testimony was, I saw the president lurched over with his head lying abreast, and it looked like he was sleeping, but he still had a smile on his face. Oh, that's eerie. I've never heard that before. Yeah. Uh, just seeing something here. I think this is one of those. Perpetual care? Uh, no, I think this is a daughter of the revolution. Oh. Yeah, that story that I was just telling you about the Richards family, the wife of Mr. Shippy, that is one of the markers. You pull that up just a hair. Uh, let's see here. Yeah. Daughters of the Revolution of America. Yeah, this is it. Neat. And there used to be one over by Mrs. Richards' mom. Sorry to jump subjects here, but... No, that's all right. Yeah, that's some crazy irony. We're always bumping into little Easter eggs like that, you and I. Anyhow, back to that afternoon. Uh, total commotion afterwards. You have all the Secret Service bodyguards and military officials, who there were many. Abraham Lincoln was actually in the booth with a, I believe he was a colonel, whose name was Henry Rathbone. He and his wife were sitting next to Mr. and Mrs. Lincoln during the actual assassination. You have total commotion. All the actors and actresses in the aftermath were immediately under suspicion because it came out that John Wilkes Booth, you know, was a sympathizer for the South. Um, Miss Evans' husband was actually detained and arrested. Uh, I don't believe he spent any time, you know, I don't believe he spent any time in jail, but he was, uh, he was taken under as a suspect. The manager of the movie theater was also arrested. He was actually held for a few weeks and interrogated. It was a pretty sad, uh, pretty sad tragedy that led to a series of tragic events for Miss Evans. Within one year of the assassination, her husband passed away. So you have, leading up to the assassination, this play, and in particular Ford's Theater, was you know had national attention and it was well known all these actors and actresses were well respected the play our american cousin was supposed to have a long run and now that's all poof gone up in smoke the president's dead she's out of a job and her husband passes away the connection to the theater's manager who was arrested and detained while he was arrested, after Mrs. Evans' husband died, her and this actress became roommates for a while until she gave up all hope in Washington and moved here to the city of Chicago. In about 1867, I want to say she moved here to Chicago. She's up ahead here for a bit. Now, she married. When she, What was the theater? She came here... McVickers? Yeah, McVickers Theater, which has another connection to the, a loose connection to the assassination, because one of the McVickers daughters married a gentleman by the name of Edwin Booth, who 
was a very popular actor, just like his brother, John Wilkes Booth. Both of those Booth boys were famous, charismatic actors at that time. They were the talk of the town in Washington. This is a judge here. Just to kind of jump off and explain a little bit about this section, you and I have, uh, we've been somewhere near here before, visiting all the Scottish Masons. But here you have a lot of Civil War veterans, in particular captains, and a couple generals are here in this area. That after the war, once they came into town, you have a lot of the veterans getting into law practice. Therefore, you have Civil War veterans in this area who became famous lawyers, famous judges, clerks of the court. Wow, what do we got up ahead? We've got some damage here. Oh, yeah. It looks like a big monument fell. As we got a chopper overhead. Got to forgive the noise, gang, but... One thing I will not <laughs> miss from the big city is the noise. Oh, my gosh. And as you get older, like an old man like me, it, I don't know, it used to not bother me, but like <laughs> you were saying, you, you're hearing stuff now, too. Yeah. Can't oh, sleep yeah. as good. As I'm getting older. You, li you live of, in the city. Any you... kind of commotion going on outside yeah. the theater, I'm always up and I can't fall back asleep. This obelisk here looks like it came from right here. Oh yeah. We've had some real bad, uh, we've had some bad weather over the last few days, but this looks like it might have happened months ago. I'm looking at the bottom of this obelisk and there's no pinning. How the heck? Well, I'll tell you what, this, I have an episode that you are either going to see after this or before this on a little boy who was killed by something that was much smaller than this let me tell you anybody who's near this thing gets hit by this you're you're killed instantly wow this is massive yeah. i'm gonna say this is a good three four maybe even a th uh, probably a ton a couple of tons guys when i say three four i'm talking thousands of pounds the way it's fallen over here, though, it doesn't look like it damaged any of the headstones, miraculously. This no. This is the Shoup family. These people were famous for uh, dye engraving and uh, tin. Yeah, tin smiths. Smith. Sure. The Shoups. So, continue the story. I'm going to take a peek here in this mausoleum. I don't know if we can see anything. All right, so we have, is it Ed, Edwin Booth? Yeah, Edwin Booth, brother of John Wilkes Booth. Nice stained glass. All right, so tell us what's going on with him now. So well, he marries her? Uh, no, he no? marries one of the McVickers. Ah, okay. The daughter of a theater. So uh, that's the theater. theater downstairs. That's where I'm going to take you next. Okay. But first, let's find Miss Evans here. Now, Miss Evans, you said, went, this is, again, the actress that was there when John Wilkes Booth assassinated President Lincoln at the Ford's Theater. She came here to Chicago, and she went to work for the McVickers as an act actor in her, used to be called an actress, but now we say actors, yeah. in the McVicker Theater, right? Yes, sir. Uh, the McVicker Theater, the Blackstone Theater, one other one off the top of my mind I can't think of. Uh, she oh, was, she was at the Blackstone? Yeah. Wow, so she was one of the top act actors. And she almost made the cast of Bluebeard, which was oh, the Iroquois, the Iroquois Theater, Theater. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Lots of coincidences. She lived a long life. And in her later years, she became famous for giving interviews on uh, just exactly what went down that afternoon in Ford's Theater. Well, the smile on the face thing. Yeah. I've never heard that about Abraham Lincoln. Yeah. That's kind of eerie. Very much so. Because uh, he lived for, what, a couple of hours? Yeah. 
had all the surgeons from across the country flock into, you know, emergency action to Washington to try to save him, do what they could, all the experts. We all know the outcome. Yeah. Of that, well, anyway, here she is. This yeah. is her grave. Catherine Evans. Rest in peace, Catherine. You can go online and you can find a lot of her interviews that she gave. Uh, she did a few radio interviews. A bunch of writers covered her. Any old film clips? No. no. Not that I can think of. Who knows? 1926, though. That's kind of... That's still early. But yeah. Not... Uh, what did she creepy. die of, do we know? No, sir. Maybe somebody will, in comments, if you know how Catherine died, it would be interesting to know. Wow, what a story. What a great walk. Walking with Britain is always fun, my friend Britain. you got to come out to Arizona, dude. Absolutely. Then you can take me around and show me. You've we'll, go, we'll go. I'll take him into the mountains. Blazing a trail out there. Yeah. All right. Do we want... Tell him to come to Arizona, will you? Everybody in comments. Britain, get off your dusty butt and get on a plane or drive. Road trip, road trip. All right, see you guys later and love you, brother. Love you too, man. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll see Britain again here on the channel. All right, guys, catch you later.